I love the winter time and my favorite part is getting to throw snowballs. But wouldn't it be amazing if we could bring snowballs into our homes? Now, of course, we shouldn't throw snowballs at people inside because that could make a big mess. But at BioBus, we thought we might be able to do an experiment about the best way to keep a snowball in your house for as long as possible. First, you'll need to collect some construction materials. You can get cardboard, foam, tin foil, cloth, paper towel, plastic containers, anything you might have around your house. Next, gather some tools to help you make your experiment. Make sure that you find a ruler and a piece of string. For my experiment, I started with three plastic containers and I added materials to the inside. I decided to use tin foil, cloth, and mesh. I'll also be doing a control which means one of my snowballs will not be in a container. You can also try this experiment using ice cubes. To construct, I simply put the materials inside of each plastic container and made sure that I left enough space for a snowball to fit in the middle. These materials will help to insulate our snowball. To insulate just means to prevent the transfer of electricity, heat, or sound. In our case, we will be insulating against heat transfer. We also use insulation like this in buildings, in the walls and in roofs. Insulation can help to keep heat trapped inside so that it can feel warmer for us. Buildings that do not have insulation can feel drafty when the heat escapes to the outside. In our experiment, we will be insulating the snowballs from the warmth in the room that you bring them into. Next, we need to make some snowballs. So find some snow and try to make several snowballs that are all similar in size. We are going to check that they are the same size by using a piece of string. I've measured mine to be eight inches. Now I wrap the string around the circumference of the snowball. Do this with each one to make sure that they're about equal in size. Now I've put them in Ziploc bags for transportation. Once inside, I put a snowball in each of my containers and I leave one out in the room, just in the Ziploc bag for my control. And now we wait. Keep checking back in on your snowball to see if you see any signs of melting. For my experiment, I waited two hours before moving on to the next step. Take each snowball one by one and use a string to measure around the center, our circumference. Once you've wrapped it tightly around, put it on a ruler to see if there's any change. Make sure that you record the new circumference for each snowball. And be careful, some of them might not be spheres anymore. Finally, it's time to look at our results. On my data sheet, I've written each of my designs, A, B, and C, as well as the control. I've also noted the size of the snowballs were when I first started the experiment at T0. Now it's time for us to fill in what size our snowballs are after two hours. In my experiment, I found that the mesh worked best for insulating the snowball. I wonder why that was. I might try my experiment again to see if I get the same results. I hope you enjoyed this experiment, and please let us know what you found.